Immunizations Lecture. Immunity is a state of being that protects us from or resistant to a particular disease due to developments of antibodies. Antigens are foreign substances and antibodies are proteins produced in response to the presence of antigens. We build the antigen antibody response. We build immunity against bacteria and viruses and toxoids. Toxoids are toxins or poisons that are made harmless, but activate the immune response against the toxins. This is what we call our vaccines. Some good examples are our tetanus and diphtheria vaccines. Immunization is the process of introducing or providing immunity artificially by administering an immunizing agent. Active immunization produces antibodies in response to vaccine or toxoids. Passive immunization is a temporarily immunity by administration of donor antitoxins or antibodies. There are two different types of immunizations. There are live or attenuated, which would be our MMR, varicella, influenza, or Zostavax. The other is the dead immunizations, which influenza, influenza intramuscularly would be an example of this. Tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Tetanus protects against locked jaw. Diphtheria causes a thick covering in the back of the throat, which causes difficulties in swallowing and breathing. Pertussis against, protects against whooping cough. Whooping cough is a deep barking cough that enables people to get rest and sleep, particularly affects children of school age. Tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, there are four combinations of vaccinations currently being used. T, little d, Tdap, Dtap, and TD are currently being used. DTP is no longer av available and has been replaced by the DTAP injection. What's the difference? T, little d, and DT have no pertussis included. Uppercase letters and is the full strength dose of the toxin, so the D and the T and the P in DTAP are the full strength dose. In TDAP, D and P have lesser doses than the T. Lowercase letters is a reduced strength of diphtheria or pertussis. The A in DTAP stands for acellular, meaning the pertussis component only contains part of the pertussis organism. Vaccination schedules. DTAP is the most common vaccination among the tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. DTAP is given to children at two months, four months, six months, in the range of 15 to 18 months, depending on if it's a family practice physician or a med peds physician. And then at school age, which is four to six years old. Tdap is generally given as a booster given in adolescents and to pregnant people. Um, generally given around 11 to 12 years old and one dose is given if over the age of 19. TD is given as a booster every 10 years and DT is given to children who cannot tolerate the pertussis component. Even though this says that T little d is given as a booster every 10 years, with the recent outbreaks of pertussis, many physicians are moving to doing the boosters with DTAP, so we cover that component and lessen disease in our communities. Hepatitis A is a serious liver disease. HAV is found in the stool and can be spread by close contact within somebody. Vaccinations are generally given between the ages of 12 to 23 months. Here in Wisconsin, we do vaccinations of hepatitis A at 12 months and then at 18 months. People at risk are anyone that is traveling and two doses must be given of this vaccination and they must be at least six months apart. 
Hepatitis B is a serious liver disease spread by contact of bodily fluids. Children vaccinations, usually the first dose is given at birth, generally before the child leaves the hospital. The second dose is one to two months old, and the third dose is six to 18 months old. In adults that have not received the hepatitis B series, the second dose is given four weeks after the first dose, and the third dose is given five months after the second dose. Hib, or Hemophilus influenza type B, is a serious disease caused by bacteria, can cause bacterial meningitis in children under the age of five, spread by contact, by person-to-person -person contact. Child's first vaccination, the first dose is generally at two months, second dose is at four months, third dose is at six months, and sometimes it's not needed depending on the brand. If a child is given the Pentacil brand, three doses are required. And the fourth dose at 12 to 15 months of age. HPV or human papilloma virus, Gardasil 9 prevents cancer caused by HPV and genital warts. Gardasil 9 is the most up-to-date um, vaccination. It used to be Gardasil 7. Gardasil 9 is in clinics as of the summer of 2015. Vaccinations given to anyone of the ages of 9 to 26, male and female, and generally started around the ages of 11 to 12. Three doses are required. The second dose is one to two months after the first, and the third is six months after the first dose. MMR is for measles, mumps, and rubella. Measles causes rash, causes runny nose and fever may lead to seizures, brain damage, and death. Mumps is a virus that causes fever, headache, muscle pains, and swollen glands. Rubella causes rash, arthritis in women, mild fever, and can cause miscarriages among pregnant people. It is important that all pregnant women get a rubella titer with their first pregnancy. MMR vaccination schedule, children get two doses between the ages of 15 and 18 months and then at school age, which is four to six years of age. Children under the, under the age of 12 months traveling outside of the country should be vaccinated. Pregnant women should avoid vaccination and women should not get pregnant four weeks after receiving the MMR vaccine. The meningococcal vaccine is a bacterial infection, infects the covering of the brain and the spinal cord. There are many types of meningitis. Both vaccines cover four main types. Two kinds of the vaccine, the MCV4, which is for those under the age of 55 years old, and then the MPSV4, which is for those 55 years and older. Meningococcal vaccine schedule, adolescents get two doses, ages 11 to 12 and boosters at 16. Some people do choose to do this a little bit later. Um, some parents are choosing to give the meningococcal vaccine at ages 13 to 15 and then the boosters would be anywhere from the ages of 17 to 18. It is important that all college freshmen get this vaccine before going off to college. Pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. Conjugate is a vaccine containing an antigen joined to a protein to enhance immunogenicity. The PCV13 has replaced the Prevnar 7. It prevents pneumococcal diseases is caused by infections with streptococcus pneumoniae bacteria. There are more than 90 types of pneumococcal bacteria. The PCV13 protects against 13 of them. 
These 13 strains cause the most severe infections in children and about half the infections in adults. The pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, or PCV13, also called Prevnar 13, it, the vaccination schedule is two months, four months, six months, tw and 12 to 15 months. Also being given to those age 65 and older who only receive the PPSV23. They are only given a one-time booster, mainly because the Prevnar 13 covers different pneumococcal strains than the PPSV23. Pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, or pneumovax, protects older adults from pneumococcal disease, or pneumonia, spread by person to person through close contact, protects against 23 different types, and given to all adults over the age of 65. Given to those also with decreased immune systems and asthma for those that are under the age of 65. This vaccine is not as effective in children under the age of two and generally is not advised to be given. More pneumococcal vaccination guidelines. One dose of the PCV13 is recommended for all adults over the age of 65 years or older who have not previously received the vaccine. These are new recommendations as of um, late last fall. So we are giving many, many of these vaccines um, currently to catch those who are over the age of 65 up to date on their vaccinations. A dose of PPSV23 should be given 6 to 12 months later. For adults 65 years and older who have already received one or more doses of the PPSV23, the dose of PCV13 should be given at least one year after receiving the most recent dose of the PPSV23. Inactivated polio vaccine. Polio is caused by a virus. Generally, polio does not occur in the United States anymore. It is usually more prevalent in third world countries. It enters through the mouth and can cause severe paralysis vaccine schedule, there are four doses typically given to patients at two months, four months, six to 18 months, and four to six years old. Rotavirus, rotavirus causes severe di diarrhea. There are two to three doses depending on the brand. This is the only vaccination that is given orally. Vaccinations are the first dose is at two months, second is at four months, and the third dose is at six months if needed. Children must get the first dose of rotavirus vaccine before 15 weeks of age and the last by the age of eight months in order to be effective. Zosavax protects against shingles. Postherpetic neuralgia caused by the varicella virus zoster virus that lays dormant in the nerves after a person has had chicken pox. Vaccination, it's a one-time dose for those over the age of 55. Those patients who received vaccinations as a child for varicella and do not get the chicken pox disease will not require a Zostavax vaccination because the chicken pox will not actually lay dormant in the nerves. Varicella or Varivax prevents chicken pox. This is another brand. Vaccination schedule first dose. Um, this is for a, our children. The first dose is at 12 to 15 months. The second dose is at 4 to 6 years old. People 13 years of age or older who have never had chicken pox or received chicken pox vaccines should get at least two doses at least 28 days apart. Influenza prevents the flu. There is the nasal, which is an attenuated virus, and then there's the intramuscular, 
which is a dead virus, administered to children over the six months of age or older, single dose given to those who have been vaccinated before, someone who has not been vaccinated may require two vaccinations if they've never received a vaccination before for influenza. Young children under eight years old, the first dose is a half dose and then is given twice, about 28 days apart. Combination vaccinations, there's Pentacil, which includes DTaP, IPV, and HIV. Pedorix, which is DTaP, IVP, and, A and Hepatitis B. Kinrix, which is DTaP and IVP. MMRV or ProQuad, which is MMR and varicella. And then Twinrix, which is Hepatitis A and Hepatitis B. The reason why combination vaccinations have become more prevalent is to reduce the amount of pokes a child will need, especially when we're giving childhood vaccinations. Sometimes, even with the combination vaccinations, we are giving three or four injections at one visit. This is particularly true when children are going off to school. Generally, we are giving four or five injections even with the combination vaccinations. So it's to reduce the amount of pokes a child has to go through. Administration, so oral would be a rotavirus, nasal, the only vaccination we give nasally is the influenza. Subcutaneous is the MMR, varicella, and Zostavax, and then intramuscular are all other vaccinations including influenza. Diluents, some vaccinations and immunizations come in a powder form in a vial as such, and they require diluents. Some are packaged together, as you see Pentacil here has the powder form, and then the diluent. The powder form part of the vaccination is HIV in Pentacil, and then the liquid form is the DTAP in IVP. So what you do is you draw up the liquid form, inject it into the powder, mix it, and then draw redraw it back into your syringe. Vaccines that need to be reconstituted typically are Pentacil, ProQuad, Varivax, MMR, and Zostavax. All of your vaccinations that are frozen, which are your Varivax and your Zostavax, will need to be reconstituted. They are all in powder form and they need to be reconstituted with diluents. Some of the diluents that can be used if they are not included in the packaging, such as Pentacil, are sterile water and sodium chloride 4% or 9%. The date and time of reconstitution that took place should be written on the syringe. This is very important. Vaccine storage. So as you can see here in the picture, this is a picture actually at the Marshall Clinic Stratford Center of our vaccine refrigerator. It is important to note that no employee food or water should be placed in this refrigerator. This is solely for vaccinations. And as you can see, each different box of vaccinations has a label. And some of them have the age range that they can be administered to the patient, um, especially if clinics are doing two, the child dose of hepatitis B and the adult dose of hepatitis B. It's very important that they're labeled. So we label them not only on the box, but right in front of the box to help reduce medication errors. Frozen vaccines are varicella and Zosavax, and the temperature range can be anywhere from 50 below to 15 below Celsius. Refrigerated vaccinations are all the other vaccinations that we give, and the temperature for the refrigerator should be anywhere from 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Vaccines not stored at recommended temperature may produce reduced potency and protection. So it is very important that we monitor how they are stored.
vaccines, um, the temperature on the vaccination freezer and refrigerator should be checked and recorded two times a day. Vaccine transport, all vaccines are shipped to the clinic, so when they are being transported, it's important to that they are packed with ice packs and thermometers should be placed inside to ensure the vaccines stay within the appropriate temperature level. It is also important to ensure that your delivery dates of your vaccinations are not on a weekend and during a weekday when the clinic is open to ensure that those vaccines reach the refrigerator or freezer in a considerable amount of time. 